And for more, let's bring in Sarah Jaffer. She lives in Beirut. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us this morning, Sarah. Hi. All right, so describe for us, where, describe for us where you were when the explosion took place on Tuesday. <clears throat> so for anyone who knows me, um, uh, knows that the probability that I'm home is extremely, extremely high especially at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was supposed to be at home, which is um, basically uh, in the red area, but well, basically just by the port. Um, and um, a friend called me um, around 4 p.m. and actually it asked me to come to a, a revolution meeting. And I told her I'm a bit tired. She insisted, so I went. Um, we were sitting at uh, this large conference table in, uh, in uh, Sursu, uh, and also not too far from the blast. And uh, what really saved our lives is that um, once the first explosion happened, uh, we went up to the window to see what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the roof collapsed on the table we were sitting in my wallet and everything I had that day are still under the rubble. Wow. So how's your home? If you were home, what would have happened? I would have died without a doubt. Mm. Now, have um, you been... Our building is the one that's the most um, affected mm -hmm. um, by this blast. Uh, it's, it's back to core and shell. Well, now, have you been able to get in touch with your friends and family, and are they okay? Everyone, most people um, are okay. Um, uh, some of my friends lost their daughter, Alexandra. Um, uh, but in general, most people I know are okay, badly injured, but still alive. Mm -hmm. That's what they they brought it back to, for us to be happy, to be alive. Well, yesterday we saw thousands uh, take to the streets in protests of the government, and those protests turned very violent. What are you seeing in the streets right now? Uh, I can see a lot of anger mm. um, and rage, but uh, if I am to be very frank, after what happened, uh, the numbers were not enough. The people are still sleeping. The people are still with their political leaders and still defending them. And if you read what we're reading on social media, you know, some people who are, uh, you know, part of political parties saying, uh, you're insulting our president, we hope uh, it happens a thousand times again. This is the kind of rhetoric uh, we are being exposed to. Um, I think it was a very big mistake uh, on the streets yesterday to, um, to divide ourselves because we took over the foreign ministry and we should have stuck to that and not gone to the Ministry of Energy and, uh, and Tourism. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to... Uh, how it's going to unfold in the next few days or what our strategies are going to be. Um, but what I know is that we are enraged mm -hmm. and we want to make them pay and they will pay for it. If not today, then tomorrow, then in 10 years, then in 20 years, the whole world needs to stand with us against them. The whole world needs to freeze their accounts, needs to make their families pariahs of society. Mm -hmm. um, we are enraged. Mm -hmm. I, I understand your, your anger, but what would you like to see done? What would you exactly would you like to see done in the future? For me, I think they should all be, they should all leave, every mm -hmm. single one of them. Uh, you saw the... the um, I mean, if that is not to say that I'd like to, I am enraged, I'm sorry, but I'd like them to die, all of them. Um, I, I, I just don't have any words anymore. Do you know that they have blocked international aid? Do you know that 
they were not looking for people under the rubble. Do you know that they didn't clean a single thing? It's all the people of Beirut are the ones who um, are cleaning their crap. Mm. And what do you make of the, the way the rest of the world has responded but to this also, crisis? Also, what's uh, the most important is mm -hmm. that we have early parliamentary elections, mm -hmm. because without that, we cannot, um, we cannot uh, get the justice that we deserve. Mm. And finally, I want to I ask you, what do you make of the way the rest of the world has responded to this crisis? To be honest, I, I think it's been so heartwarming. Um, the whole world has felt with us, but our politicians uh, have not. Um, we had a foreign president come to console people when our president didn't. Mm. Um, I mean, I thank all my friends around the world. They've been um, getting in touch, seeing how they can help. But um, I don't know if Beirut can be helped. Mm -hmm. They took away the soul of Beirut. They took away the heritage of Beirut. And all that is irreplaceable. Beirut will never be the same again. Um, and um, they need to pay for this. Sarah, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us this morning. I know it's a very challenging time. I understand your anger in the whole situation. We are happy that you are safe and in one piece. And again, thank you so thank much you. for taking the time to speak to us this morning. Thank you. Bye-bye. That, that is Sarah Jaffer in Beirut, Lebanon.